So I'm using my time today to make uh, the manhole covers. Now initially I had shown you one that I had plasma cut and uh, to be honest uh, the plasma is not good enough for something this good. It needs to have a very straight edge. I ended up with little bitty bits along the sides of it that I wasn't happy with and the plasma while if it was you know held firmly uh, it's by hand so it's not an exact science so I'm actually jigsawing them out so I'll show you what I'm doing. Let me just move this uh, little camera. So I've uh, made a template there, uh, as you can see again, same as what I've always done. The lines on it, I'm just trying to get it into focus there. And I'm currently working on, I'm almost around on the first one. This is what the plasma was leaving me with, this horrible edge here. And of course, grinding that back, which was uh, seen, uh, but I'm not happy with the accuracy. This way I'm using a black marker, Sharpie and I'm just cutting to the inside edge of the black marker using the straight edges where I have them and just finishing out. I'm just using a Makita uh, jigsaw here. Uh, they make incredible stuff. This is years old and quite simply it's a metal blade and it's, it's only four mil thick. This stuff is just ripping through it so I'll just finish this one out. There's that one on my picture I am. And that fits perfectly over it. So I'm going to copy this now times seven. Should be all accurate there. There's a little tiny bit to come off there. Uh, I'll tidy these up. But what I will do is I will finish, I will cut them all and I will tidy them all up, clamp together so that they're all coming out exactly the same with a flap disc. So uh, these are much more accurate and I'm much happier with them. So that's number one. Down the line, when I'm getting rid of this scrap, I'm going to have another one here, another one here. Uh, I'll just get the plasma and I'll rip these and throw these away. These will be gone. Could use the old line there because remember I am going to flatten these down. Just keep a bit of weight on it. Same on this side. That's all perfectly in line there. And just very gently so I'll be cutting the inside line ends. Now another very simple way of doing this would be obviously you could use something like a tin of spray paint and it would just leave the shadow. So that's that one. And when it comes to it then I'll put a template back on top of one of them, sell it, tape it down or tape it down, dot punch all the holes. I won't need these anymore so none of them will have these marks. And then when they're all clamped together, I'll change all them the whole way through. Uh, seven fours are 28 mil, so they won't take a while to get through 28 millimeters of uh, steel. So I can start this side, and you'll get a look at it actually cutting.
seven done now. It took less than an hour. So I've ground them down and I've done a bit of sanding on them. They're almost there, you can see. A couple of dings and dongs in them, but they're 100% they're fine. They're all the same, they're identical. So from that point of view, I'm happy enough. I'm going to mark them up and start drilling them. Seven pieces made, the lids. Let's try and get them all in. Now I've only dri drilled them out to five millimeters and all those uh, little screws will come back out. Purely just for guides, the whole thing will get all cleaned up. But they're all polished on the sides. And when I mount them on the actual surface they're going to be closed to, I will maintain the five mil hole until uh, they're mounted up and then go through with the ten on both so that I'm getting them exactly right and then they'll be numbered and directioned so we know exactly which one is for which because as much as they're accurate they're not a hundred million percent they're close but I want to have them uh, serial numbered so that we know which one fits where. So we're back in the aft cabin uh, I'm going to talk about that in a sec I uh, hoped to start painting the inside of the engine room and the floor because that's all cleaned out now the tank is on the ground but it's been horrible weather uh, it's really wet really damp it's not painting conditions i may have to leave this in spring and just re-sand everything again just before we do so in the meantime uh this is uh the mess that's uh it's mostly dust that's come in from the other side uh, the paint isn't too bad and there are bits of rust on the floor that I will have to remove. But I'm going to start now looking at all the edges the whole way around and starting to seal those up because they're only welded uh, two inches and then a gap and two inches and a gap. So I need to close all those up. And the other problem I'm going to have is under each of these uh, longitudinal stringers I'm going to have to drill a hole in the right where the, it meets the, the uh, frame and be able to weld across underneath it in order to seal it. Otherwise, uh, the fuel will leak out under the stringer, so I have to break that, weld underneath it, and then close it all back up again, so it'll all still be one piece. But I do need to get uh, three or four millimeters of weld underneath each of those, and that'll stop. The other thing I've done is, uh, these were the, the tops for the manholes, for the fuel tanks, the original, or the new fuel tanks that I built, so I've aged these and they will sit on, you'll have to cut bigger bits because I need two pieces for there. I don't need for there but I am going to close them up some bit because the underneath will actually allow the fuel to go through. Uh, this, this one, it'll get the same treatment. Just to slow down the flow of fuel so it acts like um, a baffle. And I have a pair of those bigger ones to close. So I need uh, four of the smaller ones, so the ones that I have there, the tank top, will fit that one, same on the other side, and uh, the two middle ones in there, these ones. So they're going to get, so I have to clean all the metal around and weld those in. And then I also have to weld, the whole seam of that was welded on the outside, so I need to grind it all back and just make sure it's perfect, and if I have to redo it, and then work out how I'm going to rise up to just that flat plate there that will uh, allow the tank top to come on top of it and then the floor sits on top of it. Six. 
times as they can be. 12, and everything in that is there. And obviously all these ones are going to have to be done as well. So, uh, just to show you what actually has to happen is the wells here that you can see, the original wells, now need to be closed up fully. And obviously I need to get in under that, tidy all that up, make a hole there, I might plasma cut that. Do the same in that side there. That's the other side of it, tidy all this up. So you can see that even when we did sand last earlier in the summer, we didn't get all the rust out and it's blistering the paint so now we're going straight back down to bare metal. I'll put the rust killer on it and then we can slowly build it all back up again in, in proper paint. So as you can see the red arch is back up again and that's for a very specific reason. Uh, it'll actually end up coming off the boat soon but I need to get some exact measurements even though I have it in CAD I really wanted to be sure because when I get to up here the original plan was to put a heap of solar on it and the, the front there can only take so much solar. It's not enough for what I want. So we're actually, instead of going with a, like a bimini idea on top where I'm currently standing, uh, we're actually going to go with a hard top, but hydraulic, so that it can lower into this height in total and then raise back up to above my head, a couple of inches above my head. Uh, six foot, one inch clearance underneath and then fill the whole thing up with solar panels. Uh, matching the front of it so that's another idea it's a year away uh, have the rams sorted I know exactly where to get those we have the hydraulics on board and it literally is one more set of valves to drive the four uh, the four rams up and down uh, so it, it in part of the planning of this it made sense to do it now I'm drawing it currently you'll see it in future episodes but just a little teaser what's to come so we're actually going to be uh, if I put my hand into the picture here, it'll be about that high in relation to it. In the centre of this there will be a mast and the radar dome will be above it and uh, all the bits and bobs, aerials and the whole lot. So the radar arch will swing back, this will lower down and that will bring our uh, air draft down to 16 feet which is loads for where we want to go.